Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be talking about gain and offset, what they are, and how they affect our images. Now, programs like SharpCap Smart Histogram will actually analyze your camera sensor, and then as you're using it, it'll analyze the current sky conditions and actually give you a recommended exposure time and gain setting to give you the optimal final image with the least noise possible. But if you're not using SharpCap Smart Histogram, that is perfectly fine. This is one of those subjects, as I mentioned in a prior video, it's very easy to overthink. Now, when you're considering gain settings and exposure times and things like that, it's really going to depend on your equipment and how it behaves. In other words, what is your mount capable of tracking? as far as exposure times, how long of an exposure can you do? And then you would just use the gain setting to dial that in. If you need shorter exposures, you increase the gain. If you can handle a little bit longer exposures, you can decrease the gain. And as you'll see, there's a give and take. Now, when it comes to offset, there's actually a very easy way to set the offset or find the optimal offset for your camera, which I'm gonna show you in a later video, which is upcoming very quickly. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on that video or any other upcoming content. Now, uh, for those of you who are using um, items like ASI Air, those will not allow you to adjust the offset setting. That's perfectly fine. These are set very well from the factory. Don't overthink. Now let's head on over and learn about gain and offset. In astrophotography, there's a couple of more terms that we hear quite a bit, gain and offset. But what are gain and offset, and how do they affect our images? Now there's a lot of technical details that go on behind the scenes when we refer to gain and offset, and I'm going to attempt to explain this in the least technical way possible by using this measuring cup. In my shot noise and read noise video, I use the analogy of collecting rainwater in buckets where the rainwater represents the photons raining down on our camera sensor and the buckets represent the pixels of our camera. Now, in my Mastering Histograms video, I explain how increasing gain moves your histogram right and decreasing gain moves your histogram left. Increasing offset moves your histogram right and decreasing offset moves your histogram left. But how does that work? In order to understand what I'm about to explain, there's a couple of concepts that's important to understand as well. First, you cannot increase or decrease the amount of photons received by your deep sky object. That number of photons or the signal received is what it is. Next, this measuring cup has an absolute maximum capacity. And generally, when we look at measuring cups, we'll see capacities listed in cups, ounces, teaspoons, what have you. Just like a measuring cup, the pixels of your camera have an absolute maximum capacity that they can hold. And that maximum capacity that they can hold is referred to as the well depth capacity. Now, if we take this measuring cup and we fill it to the top and we just keep on filling it, it's going to overflow. And we call that a mess. Same with your pixels. If you fill your pixels with the maximum capacity of photons, that's called saturating your pixel. Now, if we take this measuring cup and we start filling it up, we can measure how much is in this measuring cup. We can use those little markers on the side and we can determine how much of whatever product we're putting in this is actually in this measuring cup. So how do we know how full our pixels are? Well, we use the histogram. The histogram is a direct reflection as to how full our pixels are. If we look at these little increments, let's say that this is our pixel. As we collect photons, every photon will fill one little increment. And as our pixel fills up, our histogram moves right. In other words, 
In this little white line, the bottom of this measuring cup, is the left wall of our histogram. This is a zero value. The top of this measuring cup is the right wall of our histogram. That's the maximum value. So as we start collecting photons and our well depth starts filling up, our histogram moves right. So we can conclude that the histogram shows us how many photons we have in our pixels. So if we take gain or offset and we increase those values, pushing our histogram right, it's easy to conclude that we are collecting more photons. However, that's not the case. So what's actually happening as we increase gain or increase offset? Now, let's start with gain. If we pretend that this is our pixel, and we already know, because remember, we cannot change how many photons we receive from our deep sky object. So, with that said, if we're increasing gain and our histogram is moving right, we can't be collecting more photons because we can't change that. So, can you guess what's happening? As we increase gain, we are decreasing the well capacity of our pixels. So, for example, if we collect enough photons to make it up to, let's do an easier one to see here. If we collect enough photons to go from our baseline here up to, say, this mark right here, that's going to represent on our histogram, the percentage right is going to represent how how much percentage we have our well depth filled if we increase the gain and we have the same number of photons we now fill a larger percentage of our well depth meaning our histogram moves right so we are artificially gaining a higher percentage of our pixel well depth. And it is a direct reflection relative to the well depth. In other words, if we look at it again, we collect enough photons to fill up to, let's say, this line over here. Our histogram is going to reflect how much percentage we have filled, and it's going to be and you know far enough right to reflect that percentage if we increase the gain and we collect the same amount of photons we're going to have more percentage of this well depth filled meaning our histogram moves right it's actually pretty cool however there are consequences nothing is free there's always a give or take so what are some consequences of increasing gain one because we have a shorter well depth with a higher gain, it's easier to saturate the pixels. That well depth is going to fill faster. Also, it can decrease the dynamic range of our camera. And that's because since we are filling a greater percentage of the well depth, those brighter signals can overpower those dimmer signals. And therefore, reduce the dynamic range of the camera. Another consequence is, if you remember from my shot noise and read noise video, as we stack our images together, we're adding the signal that we collect, but we're also adding the shot noise that we collect. Since we are artificially multiplying the signal through a relative factor of the well depth, we're also multiplying the shot noise collected. So more gain, more noise, less gain, less noise. Now let's talk about offset. If you remember from my shot noise and read noise video, each pixel collects photons at a different rate. And in between exposures, 
that rate can change. And as we're imaging our deep sky object, there's a lot of areas that are very dark and don't emit a lot of photons. So what ends up happening is we have some pixels with a zero value and anything times zero is zero. So what happens is what we call black clipping. Those pixels that have a zero value are pure black and that leads to black spots in our final image. So what we do is we add an offset, which is essentially a little bit of artificial data added to the baseline of the pixels, which shifts our black point. So what happens is our pixels start off a little bit brighter, which will guarantee no zero value pixels. In other words, we have our pixel, and as we increase offset, we're adding a little bit of data to our pixels in order to start them off brighter, thus meaning no zero value pixels. Basically what we're doing is we're offsetting the histogram to the right. So more offset, more right, less offset, more left. So what do you do with this information? How do you put this information into practice? Well, when it comes to gain, gain is a good way to kind of reduce your exposure times. In other words, let's take our mount for example. Let's say that your mount cannot do anything over a three minute exposure without starting to elongate your stars. What you can do is increase your gain a little bit, which will brighten up your, um, your picture. In other words, shifting your histogram to the right. And what that'll do is allow you to have shorter exposures so you can stay within your mount's uh, ability. But you want to be careful because too much gain, you have a little bit more noise that you need to deal with in post-processing. Now, if you're using programs like SharpCap Smart Histogram, that's a very good way to determine ideal exposure times and gain settings. But if you're not using SharpCap Smart Histogram, that's perfectly fine. Again, this is a subject that is very easy to overthink, and it really doesn't have to be that way. Basically, all that you're looking for is a little bit of gap between the left wall of your histogram and your histogram peak. So if your mount is only capable of shorter exposure times and you're not quite able to get the histogram peak off of that left wall, try increasing your gain a little bit. Now, when it comes to offset, it's very rare that you need to adjust offset. In fact, some image capture software like ASI Air doesn't even allow you to adjust offset. And that's perfectly fine. These cameras come with a good offset setting from the factory. So offset's really nothing that you have to worry about. However, if you're using an image capture software that allows you to adjust the offset, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to determine the offset of your camera. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Throw a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? What are you doing for gain and how do you determine the gain? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.